I don't cry at movies very often. Like, sure, I'll tear up a bit at the climax of Apollo 13, but there is genuinely no exaggeration, only a single movie that has ever made me bawl. And that movie is In the Heights. Now, did I cry because I had just stopped taking antidepressants and the withdrawal was fucking me up? Yes. But still, going back and watching that scene, I'm not gonna lie, it makes me get a little choked up. In the Heights is a musical directed by John Chu, based on a Broadway show by Lin-Manuel Miranda. You of course know Lin-Manuel Miranda as that guy who appeared on a few episodes of Mabim Bam, and in that one episode of How I Met Your Mother. He's probably done other things, but I can't really think of them for some reason. I was 16, okay? Now you may be wondering, why am I talking about the movie and not the play? Isn't it a very close adaptation? Wrong! The best scene in the movie, the one that made me cry, is kinda shitty in the play. So, In the Heights is about this one guy named Dusnavi who runs a convenience store with his cousin Sonny, and full disclosure, I don't give a shit about Dusnavi. He's irrelevant to this video, because... During the opening number, we are introduced to the film's best character, the biggest Chad who has ever lived, Benny! Benny is Usnavi's best friend who is better than him in literally every way. Side note, Benny shows up to buy Kevin's second coffee, literally, I timed it, two minutes after Kevin leaves. Just buy two coffees, Kevin! Benny runs the dispatch at the local taxi company. Also, he's dating his boss's daughter. After his girlfriend Nina has a fight with her father over her dropping out of college, Benny quits out of loyalty to her. Benny, Nina, and the fuckboy Usnavi go to the club, and then... Darkness. New York City undergoes a massive power outage. People in the club panic and yell for the doors to open. Everything is chaotic and the chorus of the song comes in, with Claudia singing, We are powerless, we are powerless. Yeah, I can't play the actual song or my channel will get nuked. Also, I can't sing. The point is, everyone is scared and stressed and feels powerless. Get it? it it's, it's like a play on words. They're powerless and they're powerless. We cut back to Benny's group, who Snobby and Nina are worried for Vanessa, when Benny suddenly stops and stares at some taxis. I gotta get to the dispatch, man. I mean, yo, I gotta wait for Vanessa, man. I gotta find her. What are you talking about? Look, I might not have a job tomorrow, but I still got one at night, Nina. Let it go. I can't. I just stick with Usnavi. I'll see you later. Man. Benny rushes to the taxi company and gets to work dispatching. He MacGyvers his phone in a generator to get the dispatch running and starts sending people home. And, more importantly, he brings people to hospitals! Nagel at Broadway, I got a woman in labor. She needs to go to Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. Can you get her there? Thank you and happy birthday. Hey, that's pretty fucking important. Benny, and this is not an exaggeration, saved lives in that scene. Like, blackouts kill people. The 2003 New York blackout, which presumably inspired In the Heights, killed close to 100 people. And we see this in the film. Abuela Claudia tragically dies from a combination of stress and heat stroke. But that woman going in labor on a darkened sidewalk in the middle of a chaotic night? Benny potentially saved her life. And shit, ignore the fatalities. Helping people get home and feel safe when the world is falling apart isn't something we should ignore. It's an incredible kindness that Benny didn't have to do. It isn't his job, he isn't being paid, but to be honest, it's the type of thing a guy like Benny has to do. This is the scene that made me cry like a goddamn baby. I don't know, just the idea of seeing a disaster and thinking, what can I do for my fellow man? It makes me really emotional. All of these people are singing, we are powerless, we are powerless, and Benny firmly states, I am not powerless. I can do something. And even if it isn't going to change the world, it's something. I can help someone, and it is my duty to do so. Benny sees a disaster, and his first thought is to help others. And that's powerful. Usnavi's off whining about his girlfriend not dancing with him, and for the love of God, I don't give a shit. Focus more on Benny being a hero. 
And this idea of seeing a crisis and trying to help, it's repeated throughout the film version of the song. Sonny and Pete decide to set up fireworks both to create some light and to calm people down. The streetlights are down, so fuck it, Sonny decides to make a streetlight. And it works. The song becomes noticeably less chaotic and more upbeat during the look at the fireworks, look at the fireworks fly, light up the night sky part. People are happy because Sonny and Pete decided to help. And shit, let's throw Snobby a bone. Him and the salon ladies going to see if Claudia is okay is pretty good. There's this great speech Mr. Rogers gave a few times throughout his life that feels appropriate for this scene. When I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. To this day, especially in times of disaster, I remember my mother's words and I am comforted by realizing that there are still so many helpers, so many caring people in this world. I like to look for the helpers. I like stories about people being kind. So. Yeah, the movie version of the blackout scene is amazing. So, what's wrong with the Broadway version? Well, A, no Benny being the best person who's ever lived, and B, Sonny's verse is about shooting bottle rockets at looters to stop them from robbing the store, which you might realize is the exact opposite of what the song is about in the movie. Instead of being about the innate goodness of humanity and our desire to do whatever we can for other people, it's this bland, reactionary garbage about how people turn into animals at the smallest sign of trouble and how our primary concern should be with being violent to protect our property. So, uh, let's talk about looting. It's a common event, the moment any sort of disaster happens. Cities descend into chaos. People turn to crime and violence. The moment the lights go out, everyone and their grandmother starts breaking into stores, stealing TVs, stabbing people for fun. It's the purge! Society is always teetering on the edge of collapse, and said collapse can only be stopped if we're ready to grab a gun and fight to protect what's ours. Right? Right? Take 1977, for example. On July 13th of that year, New York City underwent a massive 11-hour blackout. Nine million people were left without power. The city descended into chaos as New Yorkers began looting everything they could see. 1,616 stores were damaged by the rioting. There were 1,037 fires, 550 cops were injured, and in total, 3,776 people were arrested. The 1977 blackout is definitive proof that people are not moral, that in moments of crisis they turn to crime. Let's quote a Time magazine article from the year of the blackout. Through the long, sweaty night and most of the following day, the nation's largest city was powerless, lacking both the electricity on which it depends so heavily, and any means to stop a marauding minority of poor blacks and Hispanics who in severe contrast to 1965, went on a rampage. Ew, that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. Like, you know that famous Lee Atwater quote where he talks about how you can get away with saying the most racist shit possible as long as you don't say the word black? It's weird to see things from before the right figured that out. Like, this is the same as any Fox News article your racist uncle posts on Facebook, but... God damn is it uncomfortable to have them flat out state the problem is people of color instead of saying urban demographics or some shit like that. But I mean, to be fair, they're right, right? I mean, the 1977 Blackout is a good example of how the movie version of Blackout is bullshit and the play version is more realistic. The moment a disaster happens, certain segments of the populace turn into animals. Hey, what happened in 1965? You mentioned 1965. What happened in 1965? In 1965, 30 million people across the Northeast were left without power for 13 hours. The event is famous for the camaraderie and peace it brought? What? There were only five single-digit five reports of looting in all of New York City, with the night of the 1965 blackout being the most peaceful since New York started keeping records? What? 
But that can't be right. People are inherently violent. The 1965 thing must be an anomaly. Like, clearly the 2003 blackout that influenced In the Heights brought chaos. It didn't? There was noticeably low crime throughout the affected area? Well, maybe that one was short. It lasted two days and affected 55 million people? Huh. Maybe the 1977 blackout was the anomaly and is not good evidence about the nature of humanity? The thing is, generally, disasters often lower crime rates, as people come together to help their neighbors through a tragedy. New York City's crime rate fell a third following Hurricane Sandy. The murder rate fell 60% following 9-11. The infamous looting during Hurricane Katrina was overplayed and in some cases flat out made up by media outlets because, hey, fear gets clicks. Sources in the description, by the way. In reality, there was very little crime committed during the event. The idea that everyone has that the people of New Orleans turned to mass looting is a lie. And these lies kill people. People stay in their houses instead of fleeing hurricanes and die because Fox News told them if they leave their house, a black person would steal their TV. Police use these exaggerations as an excuse for hyper-militarization and the right to murder people in cold blood. Six days after the hurricane, the New Orleans Police Department shot six people, killing two, including Ronald Madison, an unarmed, mentally disabled African man who was shot in the back multiple times. The police then kicked the shit out of his corpse. Madison, like the other five victims, had committed no crime. But hey, you know, looting's bad. Police need to be allowed to commit mass shootings for their own amusement because otherwise there will be looting, and looting is bad. Even though, again, there wasn't actually a crime spree during Katrina. It should be noted that there is a difference between stealing food in an apocalypse to not die and quote-unquote looting. Weird the news outlets tend to call it scavenging when white people do it and looting when black people do it. I wonder why. So, let's just talk about the elephant in the room. The myth of looting is racist as fuck. Like, when people talk about how people in New York or New Orleans or Chicago will turn into animals the moment the lights turn off, they ain't talking about middle class white people. They mean poor black and Hispanic people. The reason this myth is so widespread, even though there is little evidence to support it and countless counterexamples, is because racists already believe it. They didn't need Katrina as an excuse to hate black people. They already believe that racist bullshit. And, horrifyingly, a lot of friendly, middle-class, ostensibly anti-racist liberals generally believe this racist hogwash because they saw it on the news. This play really glossed over the slavery stuff. Although, to Lin-Manuel Miranda's credit, he does seem to have gone a bit better with time, given how he changed the film version of Blackout to be less shitty. I'm not gonna hate him too much for something he wrote 17 years ago and clearly regrets. Although on the other hand, he played Busnavi, so... The wake-up call for Miranda and hopefully many Americans was police and media reactions to the protests over the lynching of George Floyd. Despite the fact that 93%, 93% of all protests were completely peaceful, Conservatives spread this myth that there was widespread violence. They talked about cities burning to the ground because some guy broke into a target once. Also, much like in the case of Katrina, they didn't talk about crimes committed by the police for some reason. I wonder why. They need there to be crimes committed by armies of black people because it gives them an excuse to keep being racist. They need peaceful protesters asking the police to stop murdering them for shits and giggles to be evil because that gives them the right to brutalize them. And going back to that 1977 anomaly, can we know for a moment that it didn't really have a statistical effect on New York's crime rate? Like, there were less crimes in 1977 than the year before. It's likely that people who were already planning to commit crimes just did them all that night because the opportunity arose. The blackout didn't cause crime, it consolidated crime. And yeah, there was a lot of crime on that particular night, but when you remember that it took place in a metro area with 18 million people, no, there wasn't. 
3,776 people were arrested. Motherfucker, who gives a shit? That's one in 5,000 New Yorkers committing a crime. Shit, small towns usually have a higher per capita crime rate than New York. But I don't see the people I went to high school with ranting about the depravity of white farmers in Iowa. Also, while we have that New York crime statistic chart up, Notice how crime rates have consistently lowered for decades? Despite this, Americans consistently believe crime is rising. It's almost as if the police and the reactionary news outlets that prop them up have a vested interest in lying to you so you'll be okay with living in a police state. People don't talk about people banding together to help each other during Katrina. They don't talk about boats going around rescuing people, or doctors working around the clock to save lives. They don't talk about Americans across the country sending aid, or communities spending years working together to rebuild. They don't talk about the helpers. They talk about how there was like so many criminals and like they got on the Superdome and shot like 30 people to keep the peace because like they were so cool and you should watch this like totally cool awesome Clint Eastwood movie about the shit that I didn't make up is like cool. Going back to that Mr. Rogers quote, the reason I think it's important isn't because it's comforting, but because if you don't look for the helpers, all you'll see is lies about your fellow man. We have to look for the helpers. We have to share stories about human kindness. Because people in power have a vested interest in those stories being buried. So, returning to In the Heights, which is what this video was about before I doubled the length to rant about racism, that beautiful scene of Benny and Sonny helping is so much more important and so much better than some generic fear-mongering bullshit about how black and Hispanic people are inherently criminal. The play tells lies to make you afraid. The movie tells the truth to inspire. And shit, it still makes me want to cry.